to our lecture, and I hope that all the information that we are going to talk about will be useful and helpful for you. What is thermal engineering? Usually we say it's a heat generation. But in fact, thermal engineering is not limited only to heat generation, but also works to meet all energy needs and their transformations, for example, heat, cooling, air conditioning, electric power, and works on the design of huge electric stations and integrated industrial projects, linking their elements in optimal ways and with high energy efficiency. Also, the design of energy-saving buildings with the use of renewable energies and hydrogen in order to avoid the harmful effects of climate changes and to reach a clean energy. So, if we are really serious about getting to clean energy, then renewable energy won't be enough and we have no choice but to use hydrogen. But the problem is that currently 95% of hydrogen is produced from fossil fuels, which in turn doesn't help to achieve our goal of decarbonization. Therefore, Russia is currently moving towards the production of green hydrogen through nuclear energy as well as renewable energies, such as solar and wind energy. On this figure, we can see the next generation of nuclear power plants that use excess thermal energy for hydrogen and industrial production, where hydrogen will be produced through an electrolyzer at high temperatures of 700 to 900 Celsius. Also, experts in the Electrochemical Energy Department are preparing highly efficient experiments for the development of electrolyzers and fuel cells with both alkaline and polymer electrolyte membrane. And at the moment, they are working on increasing the power range of the alkaline electrolyzer, which will be able to cover the required needs in the fields of energy and industry of the Russian Federation. The development of hydrogen fuel cell began at our university in the 60s of the last century, where the fuel cell laboratory was built to develop different types of fuel cells for different uses. The Moscow Bohr Engineering Institute has already developed a compact fuel cell with a very efficient cooling system for using quadcopters or quads. Also, we are working on the development of combustion chambers for burning hydrogen-containing gases, like cyan gas, using the principles of wet, dry, and catalytic combustion. In addition to the designing of the combustion chamber for burning 100% of pure hydrogen using the principles of swirling, tangential injection, and micromix pairing, and other various applications of hydrogen like ground transportation, submarines, and industry. Regardless of the multiple uses of hydrogen, it plays an essential role in storing excess renewable energies because of its long-term storage and high energy density compared to lithium batteries. Researchers at our institute are developing the process of storing hydrogen in its gaseous state under high pressure from 30 to 300 bar. Since the hydrogen molecule is very small, it easily penetrates. Since the hydrogen molecule is very small, it easily penetrates the metal and makes it unsuitable for future use. Therefore, experts at the Corrosion Resistance Center at the University are working to improve the surface layer of hydrogen tanks using nanotechnologies, which in turn will allow storing a large amount of hydrogen at higher pressure and lower volumes. In addition to the modification of the surface of the turbine blades to withstand high temperatures and avoid corrosion, 
when using hydrogen as a fuel for work. And we don't want to forget about the important research in the space field, such as the use of hydrogen and the development of the cooling system within the International Space Station, where the cooling system consists of internal loop which works in water, external loop on ammonia, and the radiators that we are working on. And one of the important projects that are being worked on and developed within our university is making building more energy efficient, which in turn will contribute to significantly to achieve the required energy and climate goals. The following photos show the first stage of the energy saving house project built on the outskirts of Moscow. Energy requirements of the house dropped to about 75 percent. The house is equipped with photovoltaic cells, solar collectors, heat pump, mechanical ventilation system with recuperator, floor heating, capillary mat. In the second stage of the projects, a seasonal thermal energy storage was built. From the tank design, insulation, heat exchanger design, in this tank the thermal energy is stored in the summer for use during the autumn and winter. And right now, all the data and results of the projects are recorded for analysis. The excess electrical energy is supplied to the electric power grid. While on the next step of the project, the excess electro energy will be stored by using hydrogen and then will be used again to generate electricity when needed using a fuel cell. I hope that this information gave a little idea about the most important topics that are being worked on with our institute and thank you for listening.